Hi guys! Are you looking for a 3D scanner to capture small figures or mechanical parts? In this video we will check and review the Mini 2 3D scanner from Revo Point. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, as we mentioned before the intro, we will test and review the new Mini 2 from Revo Point. This model was designed to have more precision and therefore able to scan small models and details. The manufacturer states that this scanner can reach 0.02 mm of single frame precision, it has 120 to 250 mm of working distance, a max single capture range of 168 by 132 mm, and a scanning speed up to 16 frames per second. It's equipped with 2 megapixel cameras for depth and texture. It's also equipped with a 9-axis sensor to help eliminate faulty frames from shaking movements. And it connects to a computer or a smartphone by USB cable or Wi-Fi. For better performance, this scanner is equipped with white LEDs, and a blue light source for the projector. The software is capable of exporting the models in STL format, which is great for 3D printing. On the manufacturer's website, there are two versions available, the standard edition and the advanced edition. The difference is the amount of accessories that come with the scanner. In this video, we will review the standard edition one. Inside the box, we have a nice case with everything in it. In there, we have a small turntable, a small test bust, a tripod, and a scanner. On the other side, we have the user manual, a cable to power up the turntable, a bag with the black background, markers, and blue tack, a calibration board, a phone holder a USB adapter, a cable to connect the scanner to a smartphone, and finally a cable to connect the scanner to a computer. And this is everything that comes with this standard edition. And this is the Mini 2 scanner. At the front, we can see the cameras and light sources. These are the white flash LEDs, these are the depth cameras, this one is the RGB camera, and this is the blue light projector. At the bottom is the support for the tripod. At the back are the indicator lights, the USB connector and a few buttons. A couple to increase or decrease the exposure and one to start and stop the scan. The design of the new Mini 2 is more attractive when compared with the first Mini. And this is the tripod. It's possible to adjust the angle and also the height. To install the scanner on the tripod, we just need to slide it on the tripod support to lock it in place. And this is the turntable. It's 125 mm in diameter. At the side is the switch to select the orientation of the rotation and also to turn it off. Then is the USB Type-C connector to power the turntable and a small potentiometer to change the rotation speed. We can use a phone charger or even a USB output from a computer to power the turntable. To connect the scanner to the computer, we connect the cable to the scanner and lock it with the screw. The other end is connected to the USB port on the computer. The manufacturer also provides a free software that can work with every model from Revo Point. The software is called RevoScan and it's available on their website. When connecting the software, it will recognize the scanner model we are using. 
If you already have projects from this scanner or from other RevoPoint models, they will be shown here. The scanner will be ready to use when the blue and the green indicator lights will light up. For the first test, we will scan the test bust. So, let's power on the turntable and place the small bust on it. We click on New Project and a new environment will pop up. At the left, we can see the image from the depth camera and adjust the exposure. And under it, we can see the image from the RGB camera and adjust the exposure as well. At the top are the tools and options. At the center, we can see the data from the scanner and the distance scale. At the right side, we have the frame count and buttons to start, pause or stop the scan and settings that we can change. In these settings, we can choose the accuracy, tracking mode, object type that we will scan, if we want to scan with color or not, etc. And at the very bottom are some instructions. Before starting the scan, we need to make sure the scanner and the model are aligned between each other. We can use the camera view to orientate the scanner and also adjust the distance following the distance scale information. With everything ready, we can click on Start. We don't need to scan the same area over and over. It's actually better if we only scan a certain area only once. Since we already scanned the bust all around, we can pause the scan and change the orientation so that we can capture the remaining angles. The software will detect the new orientation and arrange it. OK, now that we have all the angles scanned, we can finish the scan. All we need to do now is process the data. We can do it manually or automatically. At the end of processing the data, we have the model ready. It looks very detailed. We can then save the model and also export it in STL format. The STL format can be used if we want to make this model on a 3D printer. This is how it looks like 3D printed. Since the Mini 2 was designed to scan small things, we tested a few more small models like this elephant. The technique is the same as the bust. We first scan the model all round, then we pause the scan to change its orientation, and then continue with the scan. And this is the result. The scanner was able to capture all the small details of the model. There is a bit of post-processing work that needs to be done to fix the feet. For that, we normally use Mesh Mixer, which is free by the way. And this is the model once it's finished. To test the scanner's ability to capture small details, we then tested this model. This one has several small features and it's a good test. For this model, we didn't scan it all around, because we just wanted to see what the scanner was able to capture. As you can see, it didn't disappoint, since it was able to capture all the small details such as the small flowers, toes and fingers. As we mentioned already, the Mini 2 is equipped with a camera to capture texture unlike the first Mini, which was not equipped with one. And to test the color camera, we chose this model. After the scan and the data processing, this is the result. Although it was able to capture all the small texture details, the color, however, is not very accurate. The vivid pink skirt is now this faded almost orange color and with a pattern on it. This pattern and difference on the colors is the result of the blue scanning light on the model surface. The thing is that the Mini 2 is designed mainly for scanning small models and capture them with increased detail rather than capturing colors. It's like a secondary feature that is nice to have included. If we check the mesh data, on the other hand, all the true details are there. The missing areas on the eyes are the darker areas that the scanner naturally has more difficulty to capture. These areas can be fixed with post-processing. 
There are other cases where post-processing is not enough. This model, for example, has light areas and dark areas. On the software, we can adjust the exposure. However, if we push the slider to more exposure, the lighter areas will be overexposed. And if we push the slider to less exposure, it will not capture the darker areas. Such models might be easier to scan with special sprays designed for this purpose. Sprays such as these ones will cover the model with a very thin layer that the scanner will capture very well. And this is the result. Again, without any post-processing yet. All the features have been captured nicely. This is another model that we used to test the scanner. And this is the result without any post-processing yet. It turned out amazing as well. Next, we tested this small piece. This one is a little tricky to scan because of its cylindrical and repeatable shape. In order for the scanner to be able to detect the model turning, we added a second model on the turntable, so the scanner can keep track. We eventually paused the scan and changed the scanner position towards the model to capture as many angles as possible without losing track. After removing the second model, this is the result. The scanner was even capable of capturing the small pimple on the model. The dimensions between the original model and the scan look spot on. And that can be seen on the 3D printed model as well. The model we used as reference is also small enough to test so we tried that one as well. Once again, we used Mesh Mixer to remove the other model, and this is how it turned out. Smooth scan and with all the small details on it. We also scanned this white shell. This is the result without any post-processing. The scanner was able to capture the lines on the shell very well, as well as the curly edges. Then we decided to scan some jewelry. First, we started with this ring with a lot of features on it. Because of the shiny surface of the ring, we had to use the coating spray so the scanner could capture it better. And this is the result. Again, without any post-processing yet. All the features on the ring have been captured nicely. Last but not least, we scan one more ring. This one does not have as many features as the previous one, but the details are a bit more shy. The scanner was able to capture these as well. The scan on this one was very quick. We only scan one turn around the ring. So, in conclusion, the Mini 2 scanner is very good at capturing small models with tiny details and the scan dimensions are spot on, which is a great option for the guys that want to scan small technical parts or figures. The color capture, however, is not as good on the Mini 2. So if color capture is a must for you, check the POP3 model instead. You can check our review video of the POP3 on our channel as well. When compared with the previous version, the Mini, the new Mini 2 is better since it can capture the details better. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye!